Hello and welcome. I'm Jennifer McGuire and I'm glad you're here. Now today I'm warning you up front that this is not my best video. It's kind of all over the place, but with good reason. I had found some products from Spellbinders that I wanted to use and use them together and creatively in many different ways. So I thought I would just hit the film button as I created them and kind of show you my creative process, what I go through when I have a handful of products that I want to get the most out of. This is a type of video that I call Create With Me, which is just giving you a peek into my creative process and how I come up with things. This one happens to be an episode, one of my longer videos, but I think I share quite a few things that hopefully are helpful to you, and I have lots of card examples, so I hope you enjoy it. I hope this peek into my creative process <laughs> proves that I'm a hot mess and I'm just trying to figure this out like everyone else, but I also hope it gives you some new ways to approach your card making. Now, the meat of most of my cards is using the Spellbinders Kits of the Month. Their subscription kit program is really nice because it has a lot of flexibility. It has great value, wonderful value, and there are many options. This happens to be the Large Die Kit of the Month for April 2021. Look at everything you get in here, and it's a great price point. So you don't end up getting paper and other things that you can only use once. It's just these dies. Now the length of these is long enough to make a slimline card or you can make regular cards and you'll see I make several different sizes from these today. I do believe I'm missing a small flower die from this. I misplaced it somehow. So I'll replace that with another flower die as I create throughout this video. I just really like that this has many different border options and the little flowers to match up with it. Now this here is the April 2021 small die of the month. So you can subscribe to whichever ones you want. If you subscribe to more than one of their subscriptions, you get a huge savings. This one's the one I like the most. Again, this is a small die of the month and check it out. It has these thanks dies that do a little impression and this die that can be used for larger cards such as slimline or five by seven cards. And it's for simple stitching around the thanks word. Next, I have the Spellbinders April 2021 Glimmer of the Month Club. Now this has lots that you can use for foiling with your Glimmer machine or whatever foiling machine you may have. So all of these, you can see how they kind of fit together and that's what I plan to do today. See how many ways I can use them all together to get different looks. If you do not have a foiling machine, you can also use these dies to make impressions. And I will link to a video where I show that in case you want to check it out. Now keep in mind with these subscriptions, you can cancel anytime. So it's something that you can do if you just like a specific month. Spellbinders has also some other kits of the month, including a card kit, a stamp of the month, and some other things. But these are the ones that I'm focusing on today. And again, you can subscribe to more than one so that you can get some more savings. And I highly recommend doing so because the May is fantastic. I've already seen it. All right, let's get started with this long border die from the large kit of the month for 2021 April. Now this is a piece of white cardstock that is eight and a half inches wide. And you can see that it covers that so I can use this die for slimline or for smaller cards. I'll show lots of different options today. I really liked this one particular large floral border. So I thought I'd play with it a bit and think about the different ways that I can use it on a card. And that's what you see me doing here. I die cut it from some slimline cardstock. Here, this is a regular card size. I laid it down to see if I could double it up to create a new pattern. Just kind of thinking about the ways I could use this die. I grab a post-it notepad and then on each post-it note, I do a really quick and easy card sketch with a note about a different idea that I have for the product. Now these post-it notes I can reuse again in the future for masking or just erase them and do a different card sketch. But by having post-it notes, I can line them up on my work surface and put some supplies with it so I know where to go and I don't forget an idea. You could do your card sketches on a piece of paper or notebook, but by doing them on post-it notes, you can stick them around and move them to match them up with different products or pieces of cardstock that you may want to use. 
So here is a look over on the side of my craft room where I have post-it notes with quick sketches and they are attached to the cardstock or the dies that I want to use for that particular sketch. By having these laid out, it saves me time and also keeps me from forgetting ideas that I may have. When I do sketches like this, I'm thinking about all the different ways that I can think of to use that product creatively so I can get more than one use out of it. We want to be able to use our products more than once, a few times is best. And if you don't have time to create all of these cards on the post-it notes, you can always stick the post-it notes to the product and then you can come back to it later. Now you can see my sketches are pretty pathetic. They're just quickly done, but that's all you need to do. Just something quick and easy so that you can remember what idea you had in your head. Let's get started with this card sketch. It's a slimline card. It has these bold thanks words from the small kit of the month. And then you can see I wrote there color die cuts under. So it'd be white on the top with color die cuts tucked underneath it. And that's what I did here. So this combines the large kit of the month with the small kit of the month, just so I can kind of stretch how much I use these and get different looks. You'll see me use these products in many ways throughout this video. So I took one of the border dies that doesn't have the floral on it from the same die set, and I'm cutting that twice from white cardstock. These will lay on top of the floral piece so that we can tuck our floral die cuts coming out of it. And this is eight and a half inches wide. So this would be great for a slim line card, but you can trim it down to any size you want. Now off screen, I die cut a bunch of florals using different Spellbinders cardstocks. I love their colors. You can see a piece that I cut a lot of flowers out over there. A little scrap can go a long way with these floral die cuts. I cut much more than I needed so that I would have leftover pieces for the rest of my cards in this video. I like to die cut a lot at once, put them in little containers, and then just make as many cards as I can from those colorful die cuts. For me, that's one of my favorite parts of the creative process is seeing how I can use those products together. And today I felt like these leaves and flowers were a great way to connect all the cards. If I made a bunch of these, had them ready, then I can use all the different products together creatively. I especially like doing this with dies, but you could do it with stamps if that's what you prefer. Do a bunch of stamped images and then see how you can use them on different cards. Do little sketches on post-it notes or whatever works best for you and then sit down and craft. You'll feel your creative muscles kind of being stretched and used, which always makes the creative process better. The more creative we are, the more it comes naturally. Another way you can kickstart your creative process is to do a Google search. Say you want to see a card idea using this die set. Just put the name of the die set in your Google search bar and do the search and then click the images result. Then a bunch of cards using this set will show up and they'll be cards made by card designers like me. And we love when you guys create cards inspired by what we did. So you could use that as a starting point, but as you're making it, you could create extra pieces so that you can then use those extra pieces with other products and really stretch what you have. But remember, everybody's creative process is different and that's what's great about this hobby of ours. Some people like to uh, find a card that they really like online and then just recreate it. And that is totally fine. Do whatever works for you and what makes you happy. I, as I said, like to stretch my supplies and I also like to show multiple examples because I feel like I have a better chance of helping folks who watch my videos. And that's really what's important to me to kind of teach some things. So the more I create, I feel like the better I can teach. So just think about what works for you, what makes you happy, which part of the process makes you happy and focus on that. All right, so now I'm gluing this onto a four inch by eight and a half inch light gray note card. And you can see my floral die cuts sticking out there. This card actually took the most of all of my cards, but that's okay because now that I've gotten going, got the process going, I will be faster from here on out. Here's another peek at my creative process that I often edit out of my videos to save time. 
I'm not always sure what color cardstocks I'm going to use together, so I often die cut multiple options, lay them on my card, and then make the decision. Here I couldn't decide between gold glitter letters or black, so I cut both. The black ones, which I decided not to use, I will save in a little drawer for a future card. That is a huge time saver too. Here's another thing that I like to do. I wasn't sure if I wanted to make my letters place kind of offset like this. So I put it on a sticky mat and then I can see through the sticky mat and I pick it up and I put it on my project. And I decided, mm, I don't like it like that. So I can go ahead and line them up straight and then add them to my card. Once I have them arranged on my sticky mat, I'll take a piece of tape. This is a new Spellbinders tape that I really like for things like this, for holding things in place while I'm creating. I use the Easy Tape, which has less tack to it, for my die cutting, but this yellow tape is great for other things too. So now I can pick these letters up all together, put some adhesive on the back, and then lay it down. I like that I can see through this yellow tape so I can make sure it's straight and that the position is just right. I'll leave the tape on there so that it can dry and then I'll come back and peel it off once I'm sure that it's all dry and in place. To finish this card off, I did stamp your fabulous under the word thanks and then I added some white pearls to the center of the flowers and kind of scattered below it. I really like the finishing touch that pearls and gems give and they're inexpensive to add. I also like that that border die, the curved border die, does a little piercing on it which gives a really pretty finished touch. Now I'll be honest, I'm an overthinker when it comes to crafting, I'll talk about that more in a moment, and I wasn't thrilled with this card. So I decided to completely change gears and make a smaller size card because that's what's familiar to me. And this time, instead of using the die cuts, I used markers to get a completely different look, a different color combination. Wanted to see if that helped me feel a little bit better about my process. You can see my little sketch there. It's a pretty pathetic looking sketch, but it gets the job done. It says to make a four and a quarter by five and a half inch card. And I'm using color with markers. And then I was going to do a text background behind that. So the markers I have here are Copic markers, just because that's what I'm used to using. You could use any kind of color in here. You could use an inking tool and in ink if you prefer but I'm just doing a little bit of blending on the die cuts that are sticking out from the border. So I used some greens and some blues. I decided I want this card to be bright. I am really into bright blue colors right now on cards. I think they make a nice impact. And this was another attempt at using that color combination. So once I colored all of those flowers, I'm gluing them onto another white die cut to give it dimension. I really love to make my die cuts stand out. I think it makes a huge impact in the end. And I think later on in this video, I'll show you comparison so you can see. So this again is going to be a traditional card size. So you can see that floral border is sticking out the top and the bottom and I can just trim that off. I use the non floral border die that does the piercing to cut from another piece to put on top. So it looks like my flowers are kind of peeking out from it. And that also kept me from having to stay in the lines with my coloring. So it was a time saver too. Now it's time to add a sentiment. And instead of creating something new here, I just decided to go into my extras drawer where I have lots of pieces I had left over from past projects. Now I have three of these drawers, all with these little containers in it that you see me take to my desk sometimes. And in these, I like to keep a lot of extra sentiments that are already die cut or stamped. Now the other drawer actually has more of them, but in this drawer, I saw that just a note right there in the middle. And I thought that black stamp sentiment would be perfect for this bold card. I recommend having a drawer like that. It really is a time saver. Now here is the stamp set that I actually used to create that just a note. It's from the Greetery and it's one that I've used many, many times in videos and I'll be using in an upcoming video too. There are coordinated dies for this so you can cut it out and add it anywhere on your card. Now I thought about using this memory box or birch press thanks die cut, but I ended up going with this one because of the white trim around it. I just felt like it stood out more. So I grabbed three of those just a note die cuts from my drawer. I'm gluing those together so it would stand out with that extra dimension. Now I wasn't sure how much I wanted of the white on the top. I knew I didn't want this much white up there so I was gonna cut it short across the top. And this is how I figured it out. I took a post-it note and I'm just putting it where I think I want to cut the white. 
I really wanted to make it really high so that there was just a little white border going, going across the top. So I put the post-it note on there instead of doing a pencil mark. And now I'm just going to cut right along the edge of that post-it note. So I was just using it as a guide so I could remember where to cut it. Now I'll glue this on top of our little floral border there and then use my scissors to cut off the extra white above that. Now on my sketch, I had thought about using a text stamp background for this, but I changed my mind and decided to use a dot background. This is the Simon Says Stamp Halftone background. I have my sticky mat in my Misty so that it'll hold my card in place as I stamp on it. I'm using white pigment ink because I thought that would look really cool against that bold bright blue note card. After the ink dried, I glued my white floral border to the top of the note card, and I decided I had way too much blue on the bottom. I know I overthink things, but that's kind of how I am in life and also in crafting, so I decided to trim a little more than a half inch off the bottom of the card. That just made the proportions feel a little bit better for me, and it was a simple change to make. So don't feel like you have to make a traditional card size. You could do whatever card size you want, as long as you have an envelope you can put it in. So I would end up putting this in a normal uh, envelope for an A2 card. It just happens to be my card isn't as tall as others. Here you can see the final result. I Once again, I added white pearls to the center of the flowers and then scattered them around. I really like white iridescent pearls because you could even color them with alcohol ink or Copic markers if you want other color options. Okay, so now that we've used that large die for a slim line and also for a roughly A2 size card, thought I'd also try a 5 by 7 I've really been liking the size lately, and I thank a lot of my viewers who said they make them to encourage me to make them more. I really like them. So I have a little sketch up there, and the idea here is to put the floral border across a card and then just have one colorful cluster of flowers in one spot along the border, and then a simple sentiment. So here I am gluing together two of the white floral border pieces. Again, this is cut to be 7 inches tall. Now I know I mentioned in videos a lot about how I like to build layers because I feel like the little shadow it creates really makes a card stand out more. I thought I'd show you comparison. So here we have two layers built up together of this floral border on the left. On the right is just one layer. You can see the difference in how it stands out against that light gray background. To me it makes a difference and especially if you put a third layer on it too. But let's go ahead and finish up this card. Now here I am putting down my first few flowers lined up with the floral border just to kind of get me started. And then I poured out all of the flowers and leaves that I cut at the beginning of this video and did a little arrangement there along the bottom of our floral border. I dug through my little extras drawer and I found another one of these just a note. Can you tell I, I like this stamp set a lot? And I glued that in place too. Once I was done, I went and I tucked a few more leaf clusters so it kind of looked like it joined together with the sentiment a bit better. I find when I put my sentiment kind of clustered in with the focal point of my card, I like the card better. It draws your eye to the sentiment more. Now before I glue that border onto my card, I thought I'd add some interest to the note card. So this is a light gray 5x7 card, and I'm using a pink on main stencil. I like their stencils because they're taller, so they work great with the gel press or on larger cards like this one. All I'm doing is pressing a white pigment ink over it, and you can see the beautiful pattern there. I only did on the right because that's all that will be showing. And then I decided at the last minute to add some satin pearl embossing powder. Now I didn't use my anti-static powder tool so you can see it's stuck in certain places. That's because I didn't really think of using the embossing powder till after I inked with the white cardstock. But that's okay because my floral border actually covers up that area where there's extra embossing. So you could have left it with just white pigment ink inked on the background, but I thought it was fun to add that pearl embossing powder too. After I added the white panel onto my gray note card, I did tuck a few more leaves in there just to fill out that corner a bit more. And I also, of course, added some white pearls on the flowers and scattered around. I like how the pearls match the pearl embossing powder we used in the background. 
So, so far I've used that larger floral border die for a slimline card, an A2 card, and now a 5x7 card. So whenever I reach for a product or purchase something new, I do like to think about how many things I can use with it. And making those little sketches on my post-it notes really helps me to remember them. So I keep referring back to those little post-it notes and it keeps me going as I'm creating. Okay, moving on to my next sketch, again using the same floral border. I thought it would be fun to kind of overlap the floral border in different ways to cover the front of a card. And I also thought this would be a good option for using a die like this when you don't like to do a lot of die cutting and layering. This is just the three pieces glued onto a background. Here's my little sketch on the post-it note here. Nothing fancy, it doesn't need to be. You can see how I just made it look like I have the border layered on it and I wrote layered on white. So I die cut this from a light blue cardstock, medium and dark blue. And I start with the lightest blue and I glue that to kind of cover most of the card but leaving a little bit of the white over on the right. And this note card is a four and a quarter by five and a half inch card. After I've glued that on, I can flip it over and then just use my scissors to cut around it. I like to use long scissors for this. It allows you to cut right up against the edge very easily. And I can save that scrap piece for another project or to die cut again later. Now we're coming in with the next one and I'm shifting it. That's one of the advantages of this long border die. I can shift it so each layer is, uh, looks a little bit different than the layer I've already put down. And then of course we can come in with the third layer too. Now I think it'd be fun to do a gift card set where you do maybe a set of eight cards where each is a different color. So this one's the blues, you could do one that's pinks, one that's yellows or whatever, and do a different sentiment on each. Now here's another time saver that I do. When I get a die set, I often will die cut the pieces from white cardstock and put them in the pocket so I can see what the die is. Sometimes when you're looking at them backwards, you can't really tell. Or I cut it and I decide not to use it. So I put the extras back in the pocket. So here I had already had them cut. All I did was cut the thank you from blue and add that layer on top, which gave me even more dimension. So that's another time saver and a way to tell what your dies are when they're backwards in the package. And then of course, I'm finishing this off with some pearls. This time it's like a mint color pearl. These are Bora Bora from Studio Katia. Now to finish this off, I did use my shimmer pen on the thank you word, and then I also used uh, glossy accents to give it shine. This is a pretty simple card for me, so by adding those little details, I feel like it stands out more. So with this card design, you can tell the card is very different than the others I've done. When I'm going through my creative process on making several cards, I always make sure at least one of the sketches is a stretch or different than the others. It feel like it really makes me stretch creatively and try new things. I normally wouldn't just put three layers down like this, but I ended up liking the look. So sometimes I think it's good to add in your creative process something you normally wouldn't do and give it a try. Okay, now remember at the beginning of this video, it was kind of long ago, um, where I showed some of the other products of the month and how they all go together from Spellbinders. And one of them was the Glimmer product of the month. And that allows you to do foil on your card. See that happy birthday there? That's done with foil. And I like how it is designed to go along the arch of that large die. So I wanted to be able to use that today. And this time I'm doing an even smaller card size. So this is a mini slim line. That's a fun way to really kind of spice up your creative process and try something new. Try different card sizes. All right, here's my sketch here. I wanted to do some scraps making a border along the bottom. And here are, are all the cardstock scraps that I've been using for my die cutting today. I keep them in a container on my desk as I'm creating so they don't end up everywhere. I was trying to color, come up with a color combination here and I was really struggling. I struggle with color combos. So I referred to the color catalog, which is a PDF of incredible color uh, comb combination suggestions. I've shown it in a video before and that saved the day here. If you're new to the color catalog, I will link here to a video where I talk about it. Uh, it's really a great resource. So anyways, I'm just cutting little pieces from these scraps and I am not measuring them. I'm making each scrap a different width. I find that's faster to do and it also makes for a fun pattern. You can even cut two pieces of cardstock at once. 
So here I have a mini slimline card. For me, I like to make those three and a half by six and a quarter. I put adhesive along that one edge and now I'm putting the scraps on it. The reason I go diagonal, I could say it's for a fun design look, but really it's so I don't have to worry about making sure they're all straight and that they end up all in a line at the end. Diagonal makes it much easier. Once I've covered that edge, I'll trim off the excess and I can make another card with the remaining scraps. Now it's time to add the gold foiled happy birthday. And I'm using the hot foil plate from the glimmer of the month from Spellbinders that I showed you earlier. It fits nicely along this floral border. The way I like to use these glimmer plates is to put them face down onto my cardstock and tape a hinge on the side. I then lift up the plate and tuck my Spellbinders foil underneath it with the pretty side up. And then I tape the other end of the hot foil plate too. Now I'm using my glimmer machine to add the foil. I make sure it's hot. Then I lay my cardstock on it with the hot foil plate down. I put the two plates on top of it that come with the machine and I press the button. And once the button stops flashing, it's ready to go. I also like to put a piece of cardstock between the plates to act as a shim. Sometimes you need this, sometimes you don't. I thought I would try it today. If you are new to this Glimmer Hot Foil Machine, please check out my how-to video on the top right. I'm going through it very quickly here, but that video goes into great detail. So once the machine's timer says it's ready, I just pick this up and feed it through my platinum die cut machine. And this puts the pressure, along with the heat from the Glimmer Machine, to transfer that foil in the happy birthday message. And look how beautiful that is. I am crazy about that look. And it really doesn't take long to do. Now I can glue this onto the front of our card. It's amazing how this very simple card gets a little more interesting by just adding the foiled happy birthday. And I like how it curves along with that border. Now we can cut off the extra. And by the way, of course, I added two additional layers under that white floral border. Now I didn't want to add too much more to this. So I die cut some flowers and leaves from white cardstock and I'm gluing those on layered up. And that just adds a little bit of interest there next to the word happy. And then I added a few pearls too. So you can see how we quickly used our scraps to create that colorful border on the bottom. You have the foil sentiment and then the details that we added with the additional die cuts. Doesn't take long to do and a great way to use up the scraps, which is something that helps my creative process. When I use up my supplies, I feel better about creating. So I thought I'd just share that as an idea for you too. Okay, so I thought I would set that floral border aside and use one of the other border dies from that Spellbinders large die of the month. There are several in there and I wanted to put this one to use. I thought it was unique and I thought I'd challenge myself to use it. So I got my little handy sketch here. This is a four and a quarter by five and a half inch note card. The card is light gray and I die cut the border from white cardstock and I put some layers behind it too. So that open area is, looks like it's kind of floating over the gray note card. Now I thought I would add little flowers to the pattern here and also some pearls. And that's what you can see in my sketch up there if you can kind of tell what I was doing. But it really doesn't matter. You don't need to have a fancy sketchbook unless that's something that you take joy in doing. Whatever works for you. For me, I just don't want to forget an idea because I forget absolutely everything. So this is a very quick card. And remember how I die cut all those flowers? I still have a bunch of them left over. I could put them in my extras drawer for later, but I have so many that I thought I'd make a few additional cards. I also have the little leaves that I can add to the flowers. Now that hello, found that in my extras drawer from that greetery stamp set once again. One Sunday afternoon, I stamped and die cut a bunch of sentiments from that greetery stamp set and I've been using them ever since. And then of course, we have the white iridescent pearls to add here and there. Again, you can color these with Copic markers if you prefer to. So the reminder here is that sometimes your large die sets come with multiple dies and there might be one you wouldn't normally reach for. Give it a try. You may end up liking it even better. And that was definitely the case here. So at this point, I felt like I got a lot of use out of the large die of the month. So I thought I'd switch gears to the small die of the month. This is one of those stitching dies. I 
love stitching on cards, especially dies like this that take the guesswork out of it. You don't need to come up with a pattern. This die actually um, does little marks or little score lines showing where your stitches should go. It's a fantastic die. I highly recommend trying stitching on cards if you haven't before because it is very therapeutic and something you can easily take on the go. However, I wanted to stretch this die and use it for a non-stitched card, so I decided to foil with it instead. I did use the letters for thanks a few times earlier in this video, but I wanted to stretch it even farther. So I have a piece of glimmer foil here, pretty side facing up, over a piece of white cardstock. I'm taking my die, my stitching die, and taping it in place. Now I'm, this is a big die, so I'm going to have to do the foil process twice. I put it down once for like the top half of the die onto my glimmer machine, press the timer, put the plates and a cardstock shim on top. When the timer is done, I can take all the platforms out and run it through my die cut machine to apply the pressure. Again, if you're new to the glimmer machine, check out my video on the top right to find out more about it. So what's happening here is even though this is not a hot foil plate, it's a die, you can still foil with dies. You just get a thin line wherever the cutting line is. So now in this case, this is a big die, remember? So I need to run it through a second time for the bottom half. So normally you only have to run through once through your glimmer machine, but since this die is bigger than the platform, I needed to do it twice. Okay, so when I'm done, when I remove the die and the foil, I'll have a thin line of foil pattern in what this cutting usually would do. So this doesn't cut it, it just applies the foil. And check that out. Such a cool look. And if you get foil where you do not want it, you can use an eraser or a sand eraser to remove that. It's just a great way to stretch your dies, and it worked really well for this uh, particular stitching die too. So this time I'm just putting letters in the center for the thanks. I did white cardstock for two layers and black cardstock for the top layer, so there's dimension. To finish the front of the card off, I just added some of the flowers and leaves that we had left over from the beginning of this video, along with some gemstones. I trimmed that panel down and added it to a light gray note card. Now my note card ended up being about seven inches, I think it was, by four inches. So it's not a normal slimline, it's a little shorter. So my envelope is a little bit long and I wanted to show you a trick. So this is a slimline envelope. You can see the flap over on the side. What I like to do is cut my envelope short on the closed end and I'll make a little mark here about a quarter of an inch to half inch from the edge of the card. Now I'll cut along that and then I just open up that end and put a bit of strong liquid adhesive right in that opening and then press it down. So I'm resealing it and making a shorter card. I've had no problem mailing envelopes like this in the past with regular postage and it's a great way to make the card size fit your envelope a bit better. So earlier in this video, I mentioned that I'm an overthinker on pretty much everything in life. Um, and with card making, I found myself overthinking my cards. Well, I decided to redirect that overthinking into trying to come up with many ways to use my products. So kind of taking that flaw of overthinking and turning it into a positive. So when I get a die set or a stamp set, I try to think a lot about the creative ways I can use it. And this was one that I came up with for that stitching die. So I hope that if you have like a little hiccup in your creative process that always kind of gets you, think about how you can use that and turn it into a good thing. And if I get really stuck during my creative process, I like to stop, look for some supplies that I've been wanting to use, and look in my extras for some pieces I already have stamped or cut so I can quickly make an easy card. And this is an example. I've been wanting to use this Spellbinder Slimline die set. I just think it's beautiful, very intricate. And I've been wanting to use this Inkblot Shop stamp set. Love the sentiments in this. Great to add onto any style of card. I also had lots of those flowers left over from the beginning of this video. So I decided to stop here, make an easy card that required very little thought, just to kind of get me going again, get those creative muscles working, and it really will help me kind of kickstart my creativity and get back into the swing of things. 
So if you feel yourself stuck, recreate a card that you've done before or make something that doesn't really take a whole lot of creativity like this one. I just added flower die cuts onto that intricate background. So I just wanted to throw this card in here to mention that. And now we can move on to the stitching dies. Now I'm just going to show the stitching cards pretty briefly because I've done many videos on stitching on cards in the past. I will link to a how-to video on the top right if you want to learn more. But these Spellbinder stitching dies make little score lines or little marks showing where the stitches should go so it's easy to follow. I like to use DMC floss, the type that is six ply, and also Altenew new metallic thread. I will link to these below. And then I also have needles and I have my die cut from white cardstock that is heavyweight. So any kind of heavyweight cardstock would work for this. You can even use colored cardstocks or specialty cardstocks. Now what I like to do is take one ply of that DMC floss, thread it through my needle, and then make the two ends meet. So I'm actually stitching with two ply because it's folded. Now I start on the back of my cardstock and I have a little piece of tape. And this little tape will tape down the ends. There are a million different ways to do this. Everybody has a different preference, but this is the method that seems to work best for me. So there you can see the two ends. I'll just tape it there and now I can start stitching. Now I know I've said it a million times, but if you've never tried stitching on a card, I recommend it, even if you don't think you would like it. I know many people have tried it and find it very therapeutic. It's definitely worth trying. Now he, this uh, die, particular die creates the pattern that allows you to do a form of backstitch, kind of like I'm doing here, but also fun patterns to form leaves and flowers. It really takes the, the guesswork out of where to stitch because it has those little marks made by the die showing how to do the stitching. So if you look here in the flower, you see those little lines? It shows you where to do your stitches. Makes it super easy. So for example, for this leaf, there's a hole in the center. So I go up through that hole and then go to the edge. And then I continue to do this back and forth between the edge and the hole in the center until I've gone all the way around the leaf. And then we get this really cool pattern in the end. I do the same thing with all the flowers on here. Super easy. If you want to, you can even do a backstitch to outline the leaf. Sky is the limit. And these really don't take that long once you kind of get into the rhythm. You can also add little die cuts to the center, maybe little flowers, but I end up adding gemstones later on. When you get to the end of your thread, what you can do is tape the end down or kind of tuck it in to hide it. Many different ways, again, to do this. I prefer taping those ends down. I don't know why, it just helps me. You can kind of experiment with different ways to do it, but there you can see the beautiful leaf that you get. Okay, so I continue to stitch this with different colors. I will link below to my sources for DMC floss so you can get some good color combinations if you want to try. I then did die cut an additional two white die cuts to glue behind this just to give it some dimension when we add it to our card. You really don't have to do that if you don't want. I then added that onto a pink panel and then onto a white note card. This is about seven and a quarter inches by four inches. And I added some really fun honeybee gemstones to the center. These have this really cool um, cut to them that makes them extra sparkly. And I'll link to those below. So the best thing about these stitch dies is once you've done your stitching, you just add your letters in the inside and put the card together and it doesn't take long from there. Here's one where I put it on a bold blue background and did black letters in the center. You can see how the gems really make the card stand out, but you have that stitching showing that is really special and something that the recipient is sure to like knowing that you took the time to make it. This one's probably my favorite because I did blue cardstock and stitching on that. And then my letters are with a white frosted glitter cardstock. So it's not super sparkly, but you see that texture? It's really cool. I'll link to that below too. And then I did some silver baubles on this one. And you can see I did silver stitching on some of these flowers too, just to add some shine. So you can really change each up to get a different look. And I ended up doing quite a few cards and I'll share more of them over on Instagram. Now these are a few thanks cards, but what if you want a different greeting but still want to use that floral stitching border? What I did here is I die cut and stitched my panel and then I cut it in half. 
So I have these two borders that I can use on a card. So I'm taking the thanks out of the center so that I can add whatever I want there instead. So I glued these two pieces on the top and the bottom of a card, and there's that gap in the center that I'll cover with a cardstock panel. So this is just the width of the card. I did white and like a purplish colored cardstock on top. And then I'll do another strip of that colored cardstock where I white heat emboss friend in the center and add that too. So I took that thanks stitching die and turned it into something different. It's a smaller card now, and I could put whatever sentiment I want to in the middle. This is another great way to think about your dies differently if you can cover up part of it to give it a different look. By the way, that friend sentiment is one of my favorites. It's from this uh, Simon Says Stamp Extra Large Greetings 2 stamp set, which I have used a lot in videos. I like the big, large sentiment that can be the focal point of your card. So there's a little glimpse into part of my creative process. I feel like it's all over the place, but that's really how the creative process normally goes. When you watch a YouTube video, they're commonly edited to save you time and to really create focus for you. But behind the scenes, there is that back and forth and kind of random creativity that happens. And I really just felt it was important to share that. I'm hoping that something I shared here resonates with you and is helpful. Now this video I call a create with me video. I've done them in the past, but I hope to do more in the future, which is really just about the creative process, but hopefully they'll be a bit shorter in the future. I hope you liked it. And if you're interested in anything I talked about, they're linked in the YouTube description below and a couple other videos here in the middle. Thank you for spending this long amount of time with me today. I hope you have a wonderful week and we'll see you soon.